hello and welcome to this tutorial now what we're going to do in this tutorial is we are going to texture this toy logo that we created in the previous one we are going to uh, then create uh, blueprints uh, that hopefully will get this into train simulator and it will be a drivable loco so that is the aim so let's get on with it first off a uh, couple things I noticed when I was extending the cab I didn't uh, uh, reset the center of it so it's slightly off center so it means that the buffers won't be equal either side uh, so I need to do that now um, so I'm going to go side view uh, and uh, let's go into edit mode uh, and I just want to delete some edges here so make sure we're in edge mode and I'm just going to delete these there we go and just go X and dissolve edges uh, do make sure you haven't got any selected when you do that uh, no it appears I didn't have any so uh, it, everything's fine there now if I go into face mode okay now that runs the full length that face now runs the full length of the loco so the center of that face is the center of the loco because that's the widest part or the longest part of it so i'm going to go uh here and then i am going to snap the cursor uh to the selected what i selected there so that means the cursor is in the center of the loco and then just go into object mode and transform and put the origin to the 3d cursor so now the origin of the loco is in the right position so all I've got to do is to shift it in the y direction back to zero now that does mean uh, the bits and pieces here will be off center but that doesn't matter because uh, I can always shift them back again so let's make that zero there we go so the locos in the center now as it happens I want to get rid of these uh, buffers anyway because uh, I don't want to I don't want to individually texture each buffer I might as well just do one buffer and copy and paste it so uh, uh, that's what I'm going to do I'm going to delete those likewise for these vents I might as well wait uh, to copy and paste them and, uh, once I've actually textured them so uh, let's delete those just leave the one uh, there to actually texture and I'll copy and paste that uh, and then uh, all I need to do is just bring these uh, few bits uh, just forward a bit so let me just go into uh, x-ray mode let's go uh, and just move oh undo that because uh, I didn't grab those there we go and let's just uh, grab Y and move them just forward uh, there we go that will do so let's put those back uh, the buffer I'll sort out in a minute uh, one last thing uh, is we want the hook there as well so let's make that hook before we go any further so top view and uh, let's have a, a cube uh, and let's uh, grab why move it forward and scale it down it wants to be quite small uh, there we go something like that uh, will do um, possibly even a tiny bit smaller there we go uh, and now just extend it a bit and edit mode and just make a cut loop cut here I'm going to extrude this upwards to make the hook uh, so that uh, square that's formed there wants to be about the width of the uh, the other one the cube itself so there we go let's select face mode grab it and go E Z Z and pull it up a bit like that so there's our hook let's uh, line it up now so side on uh, let's go into x-ray mode and let's move this up so it wants to be around about the same as the buffer uh, in the center there now it's a bit high so I don't want it that high so I'm gonna go in and just lower that down a bit so it's below uh, the buffer there uh, so hopefully that is okay now it's a bit square it looks a bit square uh, <laughs> for a toy that would probably be okay 
but I want to just round it off a little bit. So uh, although I said don't use modifiers where you can get away with them, I am going to use a modifier here. Um, and, and I'm just going to use a subdivision surface modifier. Uh, but I'm going to have it down at its lowest value. So it's not going to add much geometry to this uh, to this hook. Um, but uh, it's looking a bit messy at the moment. Need to do some loop cuts to uh, tidy up that geometry. So go into uh, edit mode and let's put a couple of loop cuts. One near the top there and a couple either side of the turn. So one there and one here there we go uh, and i put one uh, at the back here okay uh, and um, now uh, let me i'm gonna try i'm gonna try and see if i can put a loop cut across ways like that now it might square it off a bit there but i'm not too worried because uh, I want to make a plate for the back so I want to give the, the plate a little bit more shape and that hopefully will help do that so I'm going to select that come face on there we go control and just go E and scale and let's just scale it out a little bit like that so there we go and that's going to be a little plate behind the hook there. So I just need to go side view and let me go. Uh, let me go into. Uh, I'll reset the side view. Let me go back into here and uh, go into edit mode. Just need to adjust these uh, vertices there that are pulled back. They want to come forward now. So let's just uh, select them and just pull them back square that's it that's where they should sit uh, and let's just tidy this uh, bit of geometry up so loop cut here which will square things off there a bit and a couple of loop cuts here and here and this back end I don't need it to be that big so uh, let's bring it in a bit that's it let's bring it into there so uh, let's have a look at that and there we go so a bit of a plate at the back there for the uh, hook so I'm happy with that that will do uh, if you want it a little bit more uh, then uh, what you can do is just uh, select it and if you want it a little bit smoother just go shade smooth there we go and that smooths it and rounds it off a bit so there we go and same with the buffer uh, here we can uh, uh, select the buffer and again select everything there and let's go faces and shade smooth there we go and we've smoothed that off now let's uh, let's come out a bit I can move that buffer forward now knowing that wherever I make the uh, the copies it to the back it will be exactly the same uh, I'm going to go top view make sure it's not too far in front of the hook about there i think uh so got that done we've added the hook we've recentered the loco uh let's look at uh texture in it now uh i want to uh, go to a material let's uh let's have this material rename it as the main mat there we go and uh let's oh i've got caps lock on now it doesn't matter but i do like to keep uh it lowercase because sometimes uh it, things can be case sensitive so keep it lowercase where we can and this is uh main text i'm only going to use one uh one texture here uh now sometimes when you create uh, a model you can apply different textures but then uh to take when you take it into train sim you must uh bake it into one single texture at the end of it because otherwise it's wasteful uh, and it will not uh, be good practice so uh, try and only use the one texture for uh, any one model if you can uh, so uh, that that doesn't uh, include uh, uh, things like uh, when you uh, pre-shade the material and things like that um, so let's uh, make this UV, it's going to be UV and it's going to be an image, let's find that image, uh, I'll put this in the uh, in the blurb uh, and here is the uh, the material, 
uh, that I'm going to use and let me switch this to material mode so you can see right okay then uh, let's uh, first up then uh, let's select the body there uh, let's go uh, to my face select now what I'm going to do here is I want to uh, map the UV from uh, the view uh, so I want to look at the side here and map all of the uh, planes that are facing me so if I just select one like that then I go shift G brings up the select similar uh, uh, drop down uh, and then I just go co planar and if I select that that will select all of them on the same plane uh, which for a square object is fine obviously if it's a round object it's not quite so easy <laughs> easy to do but if it's a square object then that is what you want uh, and then uh, it just saves time I'll select that one there and I'll do the same here shift to hold that and shift and G and co planar there we go they're selected now uh, so that's the outside uh, did I select that bottom one uh, yeah make sure I select that um, but I need to select this inside don't I so let's uh, shift and select that then shift G and go planar there we go selected all those and select that one shift G and co planar and that selected all of those so all of them now all of the faces that are facing uh, the camera here have been selected apart from these two because these uh, are not uh, on the same plane but they are near enough for me to be to map it uh, from view because it won't distort the uh, it won't distort things uh, too much that way um, so there we go so uh, just run around the model make sure you've got uh, the bits you want selected uh, and uh, I can say that I have missed out bits because I want to select these edges of windows don't I otherwise they're gonna uh, miss out on the mapping if I don't select them so there we go they want to be included uh, in things there yes so that's it and uh, then all I do is to uh, UV unwrap project from view and now I go to my UV editor there we go and there you have it so scale Y grab Y that's it and scale a bit more uh, not too much that's it just scale in just a tad that's it make sure you're not touching these bottom ones there otherwise you'll get a fringe of color there we go that's clear and let's uh, have a look at that uh, let's render it there you go we've got a light color there so a nice light wood color um, so what I'm going to do is for the wheels and these other bits that uh, are sort of add-ons to the main body uh, what I'm going to do is uh, let's select those UV unwrap project from view and uh, let's uh, UV image editor there we go scale this down and this is going to be this slightly darker wood so let's go back and uh, there we go need to add the texture here I haven't added it to that there, there we are and I'll just render it quickly again there we go so that makes a nice contrast the wheels are nicely contrasted with the body and I'm going to do that for the uh, the exhaust the horn and the old cap there uh, and uh, the other things I'm going to map are the buffers I'll make them a sort of blue color and a goldy color for that hook there okay so with that I'm going to uh, carry on and uh, map the rest of it so I want to turn it uh, uh, right angles out and map uh, through the body there uh, but I won't do that uh, in, in standard time I'm going to go into fast motion here so you're not getting bored with this and uh, I'll see you the other side of the fast motion and hopefully all of the mapping will be done so I will see you then
<laughs> so there we have it there is our uh, model it's all textured so we're nearly finished now let's just go uh, back into the program now i've already named uh, these wheel set front wheel set back uh, all i need to do now is to join all of these elements as one uh, one mesh so first i need to apply any modifiers that i've got on there so no modifiers on there i've got a subsurf on there so I need to apply that uh, subsurf and uh, apply that subsurf i've got um i've got modifiers on there array modifiers so let's uh, apply them make sure i applied that one yeah and apply that one apply that one there we go so that's fine and i just go through just make sure the modifier there are no modifiers otherwise they will either be lost or they will apply the modifier to the whole mesh which is not what we want well i think that's it i think that's done it yep so now let's just select all of these elements uh there we go and uh hopefully do them all in one uh that one 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 and finally that one and let's go Control j and i think now i have it all there it is it's all one mesh and now i can simply export that now if you're going to export it shader you need to think about shader now uh, the shader you need to use here i need to make myself disappear on my screen so i can bring up the igs options okay and the shader we're gonna use is a train shader in and it's this one here train basic object diffuse that's the one we're going to use for our mesh so make sure you've got that selected before you export the igs and then it's a case of uh, you can uh, then select your wheel set as well because they want to be included uh, in that make sure you've got your engine body there we go uh, and you, you could make the wheel set a, a child of the engine body it doesn't matter uh, you, as long as you've got them all selected when you export them so just export uh, IGS there and uh, I've created folders here I'll talk about those when we do the blueprint but I've created folders here so I'm going to export it to this one here and I've already got some in there so I'm going to export it as that export and it says everything's okay so that is fine I've got that exported uh, and don't forget to convert your file to ACE format your texture uh, but now we're going to go into the blueprint folder so i shall see you uh, once i've got the blueprint uh, editor up and running